Welcome everybody, it's Teb Dromo, and this is Social Selling TV again. This is episode six. We're just cranking them out. We've done six episodes in a week. Nice. And I want to invite, uh, invite, I want to welcome Kevin Clayson. And I was thinking this morning, how am I going to introduce Kevin? Because I said, uh, as another amazing person I've had in my life, for the last few years, I've met so many amazing people. And it's not, it's just not by chance. I've been going to masterminds. I've been going to a lot of events. I've been going out there and connecting with the right people. And I have this like library. I probably have 50 people lined up to interview on my show here now. <laughs> so welcome, Kevin Clayson. Oh, thank you so much, my friend. Well, it's good to be with you. You know, it's funny because I love doing masterminds because I get to meet people like you and learn from people like you. And uh, you're just a good guy, man. I appreciate you. And, and I'm excited for our conversation today. This is officially my first blab. Now, so, I mean, so this is like, you know, this is a historic day, right? My, wife's, my wife wouldn't say it's my first blab, but uh, that's kind of a different, <laughs> like a different type of blab. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I actually met you before this flipping the gratitude switch. Yeah. Two, three years ago, we met at James right. Malachek's Mastermind. Mm -hmm. yeah, tell so us you, what you were doing then and then how you, now you have this whole new, you're creating a whole movement. Oh, thank you for saying that. That like just makes my heart pitter patter because that's what it's about. It's about the message and the movement way more than it's about a book or me or anything. And uh, so when we met, I was, um, well, I'm, I'm in my office right now in our corporate headquarters. So I started a company about, nine years ago with my buddies, uh, it was three of us, and we started a real estate investment company. And it's, it's since grown and, and done all kinds of things. I mean, we've got a personal development arm, we've got, you know, financial services and planning, we've got um, insurance, we've got, uh, you know, we, we actually opened a direct sales company. And so we actually have uh, a, a direct sales force out there. So I kind of like own an MLM, which is awesome. Um, but while that's been really fun, and we've helped, we've done over, you ready for that? A lot of people know this. We've done a half a billion dollars in real estate transactions with our clients. Wow. Which is just awesome. I mean, what that means to me is not that we've been successful as a company um, from a monetary standpoint, as much as it means that we've transformed people's lives and put them on an entirely different financial course. And so that's been my life for nearly a decade. And uh, about two years ago, my life began kind of moving in a slightly different direction. Um, and while I was still doing Strongbrook, I had this other thing that was happening, which in the background was this, uh, what, what's now become a book in the movement that you talked about, which is flipping the gratitude switch. And uh, the story of how I got there is interesting. The company actually plays a, an important role. But now what I do is I speak. I love speaking at high schools and middle schools. That's probably, I do all kinds of talks. I do corporate talks and I do, um, you know, I speak for MLMs, you know, just going in and training their, their teams and their reps and all of that. But my favorite thing to do is to go and speak uh, with these kids because I could just share, them, share with them some things in a short amount of time that can change maybe the way they look at life. And I love that. And, uh, and I've got the book that's going to officially drop in April, and I've got all kinds of cool stuff that's going to be coming out um, after that book and even before. And we're really launching this whole movement, and, and it's not just going to be a book. We've got multiple books that are in the works um, that is just going to be so much fun. And so now I get to spend my days in my life teaching people about the unbelievable, transformative, and life-altering power of gratitude and how that can improve their business, create some more success, and ultimately just make it so they never have to have a bad day again, which is kind of cool. So, uh, awesome. so yeah, it's just it's fun. So, for those who just joined us, this is Social Selling TV, and this is Kevin Clayson, our guest, and he's he's really shy. We're going to pull him out of his shell here, but <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah. You're lucky that I'm not like shirtless and dancing in the background right now. I mean, that's <laughs> I've, I've seen the dancing, but not shirtless. <laughs> <laughs> then you are blessed, my friend, because uh, nobody should have to witness that ever. <laughs> so if people have questions for Kevin along the way, it's in the chat window. Just put forward slash capital Q, and we'll get your questions along the way. And we're just going to have a nice conversation here, talk about gratitude and how it's played a role. And I remember you, Hal Elrod, was in our mastermind together, and he's yeah. the founder of the movement Miracle Morning. Yes. Did that inspire you in any way? To oh. 
Man, in fact, I got to undo my earphones. I only, I, there's a couple books that I keep on my top shelf all the time because they're the ones that I, they're the ones that frankly have probably made the biggest difference in my life. And one of them is my buddy Hal's book right there, The Miracle Morning. And uh, Hal was in our mastermind. And what's interesting, Ted, this is why I think there's so much power in masterminding because you never know who you're going to meet. You never know who's at the table with you. And you never know not only what you're going to learn from them, but what you may share with somebody else. And sometimes I find that I, I'll share things with somebody and I'll go, holy cow, that's like the best advice in the world for me, right? And it's yeah. just this powerful thing. And man, I, I, uh, when I got to know Hal, I didn't understand what the Miracle Morning was. And um, Hal gave me this book. And uh, I think this is the one he actually gave me that day. Let's see. I think it is. Yes, it is. I'm going to cover up his phone number and his email, but this is the one he gave me and signed that day. And uh, I got to the point, Ted, where I knew that I needed to write the book Flipping the Gratitude Switch. It had made such a drastic shift in my life. It changed everything for me. It changed the entire trajectory of what I was doing. It changed my marriage. It changed the way we parented our kids. And it was all around this idea that I kind of found and discovered that gratitude is something that you do, not just something that you wait to feel. Ooh, and, uh, that's awesome. Say that again. Well, yeah, gratitude is something you do, not just something you wait to feel. And I, I didn't know that. I, I didn't know that that was uh, the, the gratitude was was more than than just this thing you kind of feel at Thanksgiving, like you know, before you watch football. And um, I started to train people on what gratitude had done for me. Th this sort of transformative power that gratitude was having in my life. And, and I started to share it and I got so many responses. They said, Kev, you gotta write a book. Yeah. You gotta write a book. And I started calling it Flip the Gratitude Switch because I kind of created this little formula and I could use it internally and it would change that moment and change the day. But Ted, I'm sure you can relate to this. I was a quote unquote busy entrepreneur running a business and I didn't have time to write a book. Right? At least that's what I thought. I remember when you first joined the mastermind, you talked all about your business and how you're going to grow that business. And you were like laser focused on that business. Laser focused. Yeah. Yeah. And so I knew, I, I felt that I received an impression. Uh, I believe that it was inspired of God. I, I believe in God and that I needed to write this book. And I didn't know where I was going to find the time. So come back to my buddy, Hal. And I thought in January of 2015, Jan right at the beginning of the year, I said, okay, I'm going to write the book. And I'd been doing research and laying the tracks to write the book, but I hadn't actually sat down on the keyboard and like started typing it out. Yeah. And so I said, okay, here's what I'm going to do. The night before I decided to start writing my book, I opened Hal's book and I looked up what his uh, savers was, which was the, the life savers method or whatever, wh which he talks about is... Uh, you know, the, I won't go into it right now, but it's the things you do in the morning to kind of transform your day. Right. So I looked it up. I made up a little sheet that night that said, tomorrow I'm going to do all of these things and I'm going to get up at 4 a.m. and I'm going to create the time to write my book. And I remember uh, the day that happened because you posted on Facebook and you were like a house on fire. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's true. <laughs> I was. And I was like, okay, I'm doing this. And so I got up that morning. I went through my miracle morning and I came to the office and I sat down on my desk and I started typing. And I did that because of the miracle morning and getting up at four and realizing it wasn't hard to be a morning person and that there was ways that I could start my day and create time I didn't think I had that because of how, because of his influences, now we've become very good friends. Um, it created space in my life to be able to write the book. And so uh, I, I have him to... I'm so eternally grateful to him because the book wouldn't have got written were it not for Hal Elrod and this book and the fact that we were at that mastermind with him that day. It's just crazy how it all comes together. It is. That's it's you surprise you total strangers. We all got together. There was yep. gosh, so many of us. And if we just you just kind of come right together. You migrate into little groups and people just start sharing things. My whole thing with gratitude started with Perry Marshall. Oh yeah. 
And what he does is he has a, a real small little notebook. And every morning he gets up, first thing he does is he writes down five things he's grateful for. Love that. And I just started doing that every morning. And sometimes you don't know what you're grateful for. You just write down anything. That's right. And that just yeah. starts flowing. And it's, it does, it's like a movement. Well, one of the chapters in my book is I say that, that I, I say you have to turn gratitude into a verb. And I say this a lot when I go and I, I share this with audiences because a lot of people think that gratitude is like that thing that you kind of feel like we talked about earlier. And if you look up gratitude in the dictionary, it says it's a noun, right? Like a person, right. place, or thing. And I'm going, uh, uh gratitude is something you do, not just something you feel. And so I, I, in the book, I said, we've got to turn it into a verb and make it this active thing. Yeah. And that's where the difference came for me. Um, it, you know, the whole journey actually started for me back when I was at an event uh, with, uh, we, we've got a, a, a friend that we share, um, a man who I think probably had a good influence on both of us, a man by the name of James Malachek. I was actually, one of the first events that I ever went to with James, there was a guy speaking uh, named Darren Hardy, right? Yep. Uh, yep. From Success Magazine. And he talked about that he kept, and by the way, for any of the men listening, I'm gonna share with you what Darren Hardy did. And, and uh, this will, give you <laughs> so many brownie points with your wives, man. I'll tell you what, he kept a gratitude journal for an entire year about his wife and she didn't know it was in secret. And then he gave it to her for like, I don't know, Christmas or oh an anniversary. Can you, can you imagine the kind of points you'd win? Whoo, Amazing. <laughs> but that was really the first time for me that I went, oh my gosh, no, gratitude might, might be something more than like this word that I've heard yeah. and that like, Oh, I'm supposed to, we always think that, um, we have to feel thankful, but I would say more than feeling thankful, you feel thank you. And the reason why I say that is feeling thankful. It's really easy to kind of use the word, Oh, I'm thankful that I woke up today. Yeah. But notice how we'll kind of say it. it's almost dismissive, right? It's like, yeah, yeah, I'm thankful. I know I'm supposed to have gratitude. But when you actually trigger gratitude, and you, I, I always say you activate or initiate gratitude, your body actually changes and, and you actually feel the power that's inherent in thank you. And, and when you get up every morning, like Perry Marshall shared, and you put some things down in your journal, you know, there's a lot of people, and I actually take up issue with gratitude journaling in my book because it doesn't work for a lot of people. And the reason is they remove themselves from the present moment and they try to go find something that they're thankful for about that happened yesterday or whatever. The way that you'd be able to, to gratitude journal most successfully is in the moment as you're writing down those five things, maybe you look down at, at your hand that's holding the pen and you go, I am thankful that I have five working fingers. Yeah. And maybe as you put that pen to paper, you go, I'm thankful I know how to write. I mean, these may seem over like oversimplifications, but what you're doing is you're becoming present and you're actually activating gratitude in the moment as opposed to just going, yeah, gratitude's a thing that I can feel. That's exactly what I went through. Did, I you like, did? What am I gonna write? I just had, I'm like in my head instead of my heart. And when I just right. got into my heart, it's like, it just starts flowing. It does. Yeah. And, and what's interesting, so when we activate gratitude, and the whole thing that I teach in the book is called flipping the gratitude switch. And I, I have this thing called the flip formula, F-L-I-P. And it's a really simple way that you can actually activate gratitude and make it an active force in your life for good. And, uh, and one of those steps I talk about when we activate gratitude, um, and what you probably notice as you're writing stuff down and, and becoming present is our body changes, our body releases dopamine. So the chemical dopamine, it's a reward chemical and gratitude is one of the easiest ways to trigger it. We can actually become addicted to dopamine. Yeah. And uh, right, I mean like, you know, Facebook or LinkedIn, you know, when you get a notification, you always immediately like go check it out because you want that little positive feedback. Like somebody thought of me, yay. Yes, right? you know? it's and, like cocaine uh, addiction. Uh. Yeah. You wake up in the morning and, and you're doing the right thing. You, you practice gratitude. Most people wake up in the morning like, how many likes did I get on that post, right? And, and we do that because it releases dopamine and it feels awesome and gratitude releases dopamine. And so when you can become present and activate gratitude and actually feel thank you more than just be thankful, um, your body starts to change. You become addicted to that feeling. And what happens is that feeling of active gratitude becomes transcendent 
in sort of everything that you do. And um, what I share and what I found work for me is that when I would not even just be thankful for the things that are sort of common, right? Like, obviously I'm thankful for my family, for my kids, I'm thankful for my health, but where gratitude really started to activate and trigger for me was when I kind of got to a low point uh, with my, with, with our company. I mean, I was traveling all over. I was always on planes and in hotels, yeah. which a lot of people, Ted, you know, cause you've done it. I've been there. Lot, people actually think that's glamorous. Um, it's not glamorous when you lay in a hotel bed by yourself and have to put on Jimmy Fallon to fall asleep because you're lonely and you miss your wife. Like that's not glamorous. No. That is hard. And you don't even and, know what city you're in half the time. <laughs> uh, that's the worst. You wake up like, wait a second. Uh, am, is it Toronto? Toronto? No, no, no. I'm in the States. Uh, and you go through that whole thing. And it, you know, I was traveling a lot and we'd had this newborn baby who'd been in the NICU for a couple of weeks and he did not ever sleep through the night. We finally got him home and we were getting up with him all night. You know, my wife would get up with him when I travel, I'd come home, I'd want her to sleep. He was a bottle baby. So then I'd get up with him. So I was exhausted. I felt I was choosing to believe I was overworked and underappreciated, right? Oh, Even as an sucks. owner of the company. Um, <laughs> and, and we'd hired this guy who was supposed to take over some, some duties for us. And he did, but because I was an owner, you know, you kind of go in wherever there's a need. And so I kind of become like, almost like part of his team, almost like an employee, even though I was an owner and it was weird. And I was really unhappy. And I just kind of had this feeling one day, I was thinking about going to the office. I was sitting in my car, looking down to the office going, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I want to run away. I'm tired. Nothing's what I thought it would be at this point in my life. And uh, I remembered Darren Hardy in that journal that I'd written in and I cracked it open and started to realize that I'd written some things about what gratitude could do. And uh, I won't bore you with the whole story, but what ultimately happened is I'd written in the journal that day um, when I listened to Darren Hardy speak, I wrote this phrase. It said, uh, I wonder if I have the journal. I could probably show it. I know I, know I have the journal. I just don't know where it is right now. <laughs> but it, uh, oh, here, is that it? No, that's the wrong one. It said, pick for 21 days. I wrote it in terrible English. I said, pick for 21 days of frustration and then keep a journal about that thing. I don't know in what world I would ever think that's a normal sentence, but hmm. the word popped off the page. It was a journal. It was frustration. And I went, whoa, 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 that's different. So you're telling me I need to become frustrated and then try to find a way to be thankful about that frustration. And I'd never considered that. That's when the world opened up to me is then what I started to do is as I go throughout the day, because this always happens, right? You get frustrated, the person you work with doesn't do what you want, the guy cuts yeah. you off on the freeway, uh, you know, you, you go to the gas station and your favorite drink is out, I mean, whatever. whatever. There's all these little things, I got kids, they ride on the wall, they leave their toothpaste out and I knock it in the toilet accidentally, all that kind of fun <laughs> stuff. Little things, right? yeah. <laughs> and, and you could be, you step on a Lego, which by the way, one of the most painful experiences ever in bare feet, right? Oh, you know yeah. how that goes? Yeah. There's all these frustrations. And a lot of times what we think is we think that our bad day is a bad day because like, big things happen. What we don't realize is that it's those little frustrations that we don't do any work on that compound to make us feel like we're having a bad day. Because when we wake up and we stub our toe on the bed, then when we get in the shower, we're more frustrated that our kids didn't clean up their toys. And then when we go into the kitchen and we're excited to have toast and we realize that there's no butter, we're even more frustrated. And then we get in the car and we realize that our wife didn't you know, fill up the tank like we'd asked her to or whatever. And so yeah. now I've got to go get gas. And then I get on the freeway and the guy cuts me off. And then I get into the office and the one person who I don't want to see is the first person I see. And all of these tiny little things compound. And before I even start my day where I'm supposed to be inspiring and helping people, I'm just like in a rage, like, oh my gosh, this day sucks. Right? Oh, and yeah. so what I started to do, Ted, is I started to go, okay, so when the, the first frustration shows up, I'm going to take it and I'm going to flip the gratitude switch and I'm going to become thankful for it. So what I created is the four-step formula, which is F, find the frustration. Mm -hmm. So as soon as that frustration shows up, like you have to acknowledge it. I would say, give your frustration a high five. Like, hey, what up frustration? 
you're here, yeah. I'm here, let's hang out. I know, you know you're rather, there. Than, rather than just let it go. So that's what a lot of people do. Yeah. Like, but then it doesn't go away, though. It just really gets into you and builds up. Exactly. So we become, we become present and go, oh, whoa, 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 I'm feeling frustrated. Cool, awesome opportunity. And then we move to L. L is to look for what's awesome. There is always something awesome embedded in every frustration. It's just a lot of times I don't realize that. Yeah. You know, if I were to use the example of my kids writing on the wall, so that could be frustrating because I told them, hey, let's not use markers and crayon on our white walls. Right. But rather than being frustrated and getting mad at my kids and going, how dare you? I've told you a hundred times. What if I just paused for a moment and I went, okay, I'm frustrated. Let me look for what's awesome. You know what's awesome? My kids are here. They're alive. They're in my home. I can hug them. Mm -hmm. Oh, they wrote on walls. I have walls. Like I have a house. There's a yeah. lot of people that don't have that. And now the chain reaction starts in the other direction and you start to think about all the awesome stuff, right? right. So that's why you begin looking for what's awesome, but you've got to look for what's awesome embedded inside of the frustration. Yeah. Then you move to I. I is where you activate, you initiate gratitude. This is where you actually not just go, you know what? Oh, yep, I've got kids. You go, I am so thankful that I've got these kids. And saying those words, especially if you say it audibly, you can say it in your head. Um, when you actually feel the thank you and you don't just say the thank you, your body does shift. And then you move on to P, which is what I call powering up with gratifuel, because I yeah. think that gratitude fuels life. And that's that dopamine that floods you. And then what happens is now that you found the frustration, you looked for what's awesome, you initiated gratitude, your body powers up with gratitude, and that moves you forward until the next tiny frustration shows up. And now you already know the cycle and you go through the process again. And that entire process is what I call flipping the gratitude switch because you could do it in a short amount of time when you're conscious to it. And then it changes sort of how you feel instantly. I would say that flipping the gratitude switch illuminates life cha life's challenges and it enhances the beauty that was already there. You know, it's like flipping that switch and turning on the light. And that right there, Ted, that, that whole thing has changed everything for me. Everything been amazing oh, it's like a huge weight off your shoulders you just yeah. you're releasing all that little those little things you think you said really you're complaining because you don't have enough gas in your car and you can go buy gas yourself yeah little things little things i i always say uh you know how sometimes i maybe this has happened to you it's happened to me many times in fact i got i just got uh damon john's new book power of broke you heard about that book yeah yeah so i mean for those that that don't know Damon's a good guy. It, it says how empty pockets, a tight budget, and a hunger for success can become your greatest competitive advantage. But, you know, here's the deal. If you're, like, steeped in the thought that I don't have enough money, I'm broke, uh, and you engage that fear, you're never going to have the ability to go create the success. So what if uh, I've had times when, you know, there's been $5 in the account. And, and what if, what if you, uh, instead of being sort of frustrated that you had $5 in the account, what if you became thankful you don't just have four? Right. What if you just took that moment and went, you know what? That's one more than four. And I know that seems overly simplified and almost corny, but it's that moment of taking that frustration and isolating it and doing some work on it and not giving into it that changes the entire trajectory of that moment. And you change enough moments, you change days, days turns into weeks weeks into months, months into years, right? And years into lifetimes. And so it can, it can be super simple that in that moment you feel frustration, you find a way to do something with it. That's really just been a big difference maker for me. It is. It's, it's kind of like a meditation in a way because you just, you feel what the, the problem is, you release it. Right. It's, not, it's called what the Sedona method years ago. I don't know if you ever heard of that. Where you just kind of work, if I you had like- any kind of bad feeling, you just kind of close your eyes and feel in your body Got where it. it is. Yep. And you just visualize it releasing out. Uh-huh. It's like just yeah, I mean, that's... like what you're doing. Flip the switch. And, and you know what's funny is I actually I, – I, so when I started to call it flipping the switch because that's just kind of how it felt inside, I actually had light switch covers made for our home. And so I actually have oh, – I'll show you. the. Uh, this is the – on my phone, I just have a picture of it. Um, this is actually a light switch cover. Uh, from our 
you know, from our bathroom and, and, uh, and I have one in my office too. And the reason is, you know, I always, and I have a whole thing in the book on this that really kind of brings home the imagery. But if you were to walk into a dark room and, and it's pitch dark and you don't know what's in there, you know, there's something awesome in there that you have to find, but you've also been told there's all kinds of, you know, nails and thumbtacks and glass and stuff. And right. there's all kinds of things you could get hurt on. And it's pitch dark. You, you, it's pitch black. You, you don't know what's in there. And if I said, okay, you've got to get from, as soon as you get in the room, that thing that you want most is somewhere in that room. Good luck finding it. Hopefully you don't slice your feet up. Right. Um, that would it'd be challenging, right? But that thing is there that you really, really want. Well, with that simple act of flipping the switch, all of those challenges become illuminated and you can finally actually really physically see the thing that you really, really want. Right. And um, so I put those, those light switches in as sort of like this constant image reminder that what I could do internally is as simple as flipping that switch. And then we started to use it with our kids. Like when our kids get really frustrated, he hit me, she hit me, and that whole yes. thing. We'll actually walk them through a process to flip the gratitude switch so that they can actually become thankful that they have that brother or sister or they think about the good that, that they love about that person as opposed to just, he hit me, she hit me. And we will physically have them go in the dark room and flip the gratitude switch and remind them what they could do is a physical thing and it actually makes a big difference. And, and that has made um, the way that we parent our kids. It's awesome. Yeah. I think, I think that I got this message delivered to me because I was like the least grateful person on the planet. And, and sometimes I still fall into those traps and I have to remember, no, 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 I've got tools. But my daughter, she gets it, man. She's seven and she's so stinking smart. And there, I, I could get frustrated with something and she will call me out and she'll say, dad, can you think of a way you could flip the gratitude switch? And I'll go, yes. Kids and are I mean, so good at that, aren't they? <laughs> it's awesome. And my wife too, my wife, is she's embraced it and it's changed the way we interact with each other because if I'm frustrated or she's frustrated, rather than sort of like calling attention to it, like, do you really think you should be so mad? It's kind of like we think about flipping the gratitude switch and say, you know, babe, let's try to think of a way we can flip the gratitude switch and it changes the conversation. And that has been such a blessing to me. And uh, it's just made a big difference. So that imagery is something so simple, but it's just a reminder of this thing that happens inside. And it's been a big, it's been a big difference. I can um, see oh, this and, being huge for, for managing people in your company, because instead of getting frustrated with them, you can just yeah. take a deep breath, flip the switch and have a nice conversation with them. Exactly. In fact, if you look over in the messages where it says at Milana Clayson, yep. that's yep. my wife. And she says, uh, he's, she, she said she called me handsome. So she is I mean, flirting I, with you. Well, good. <laughs> hey, baby. I'll be home in a minute. Um, <laughs> but, you know, uh, hold, do we, there's actually, I do have a question here from. Question. Yeah. Devin has a question about masterminds. Hey, Devin, welcome. Oh, good question. Yeah. Yeah. What do you look for before choosing a mastermind to join? Well, I don't know about you, Ted. I just look for, okay, first of all, I think it's really important that you understand that your life can change in a mastermind. Napoleon Hill talked about those principles. Yeah. And if you're not participating in a mastermind or you don't have one, you ought to get one right away. And I actually don't think it's a bad idea to invest money and, and pay for um, a mastermind simply because you'll hold yourself accountable to go and attend and try to get as much out of it as possible. And so I know for me, I want to go to a mastermind where there's like-minded individuals from the standpoint of they look at the world the way I do. So I want them to be entrepreneurial minded. Yeah. Um, but I don't want them to be exactly like me. Like I want them to have a different set of expertise and, and a whole wide range of ideas um, that they can share with me and that I can share with them. So I want it to be diverse from the standpoint of maybe what people do, but I want it to be um, similar from the standpoint of like who they show up and be in life. Like I don't want to go mastermind with a bunch of people that are victimized by everyone and everything. And then it's just like a, a huge, you know, for lack of a better term, bitch fest. Like I, I want to go and connect with people that are like-minded from the standpoint of going out and providing value and empowering other people um, but I also don't want to go to a mastermind where people are just money driven, where it's like, oh yeah, we're just going to mastermind and talk about how we just yeah. make more money I, because I, I'm interested in providing more value. And then money is sort of the good friend, Bob Berg, who wrote the, the go giver, 
always says that, you know, money is the thunderclap to, uh, to lightning's value. And, and I want to, I want to go and find people that want to provide value because I can learn from them. So that, those are a couple of things I look for like-minded in how they approach life, but different in terms of their background and expertise. Yeah. For me, it's, they have to have the same values as me. That's a, the start point. Usually the leader, I kind of connect with the leader and then he attracts the, his people like him or her. And then I've been in some masterminds where they were driven from money and they were like, these guys were just, they would take people's money and it wasn't always ethical. Like, yeah, no, it's not okay. I'm sorry. This isn't for me. Yeah. Yeah. I can't do that. And, and you know, it's kind of, it's kind of it's masterminding. And then I would also say the same thing about like networking events, because a networking event is not a mastermind event, by the way, right. a networking event. Sometimes people kind of get those, uh, I found people get those mixed up. A networking event is where you can go and, and notice what I'm going to say, not go and meet people where you can go and find new people to serve. Um, and, and I think that when you go to a networking event, if it's, if it's the kind of thing where they like barf on you, who they are and what they do and like give you lots of cards and say, Hey, we ought to do business together. Like not so much, but if you go find a networking event where people are focused on connecting you with the person process or service that you need in your business and they're, primary uh, goal isn't to like take your money, but it's to connect you or provide something for you. I think that that's also those same principles are important in a mastermind. So you don't want to be in there with a bunch of selfish folks who obviously they're looking to get something for their business, but my, the most successful masterminds I think are the ones where people show up with the kind of the attitude and the spirit of a servant. Like I'm going to share as much as I can with as many as I can. Yeah. I think that's that's kind of important to look for too. That's huge because people don't go to networking events and masterminds to buy. They no. go there to learn and connect. Right. Yeah. So you go exactly. serve them. The more you give to them, the more it comes back to you. Exactly right. Oh, that's so valuable. People don't get that. I, I'm in the middle of this book. Have you ever read the book um, Millionaire Fast Lane? No. Okay, it's awesome. And, and uh, the guy is just this really straightforward guy. He started an internet business, was able to become successful, and then wrote a book on like how to get into the fast lane to become successful. And he shares just some really good straightforward principles. And one of them is he talks about you know this idea of value, but he puts it in this context. Like there's so many people that move, and, and I would say this to anybody um, just kind of in general that's listening, that's thinking about going into business, starting a business, improving your business. If, if you were to talk to somebody like Ted, who is, by the way, Ted, you're a genius and you know it. I mean, you're unbelievably successful and you have a knowledge base that very few people have. And you, anybody that interacts with you would be blessed by what you have and what you do and would be served well. But if well, they came you. to you and they're like, Ted, I just want to grow my business. How do I grow my business? How do I make more money at my business? You probably can see those people from a mile away. And while I'm sure you'd share information with them, you also probably know that if they're trying to, for example, um, learn LinkedIn to just make more money, the, the reality of their ability to um, go and make more money on LinkedIn isn't gonna be, it is gonna be more dictated by their approach to the information you give them as opposed to just the information. Like if somebody came in and was like, I wanna figure out, I've got something of tremendous value and I believe the market has a need for it. I wanna go on LinkedIn and find out how I connect with more people to, to, to provide more value to more folks. And if they wanna provide value in return to me by the way of money or whatever, uh, that's fine. And Millionaire Fastlane does this really good job of talking about this idea of these money chasers that just go from business to business because they're not in business to serve and provide value, they're in business to make money. And I think that money, again, can kind of become sort of the, the, the after effect of going and doing something really powerful for others. Yeah. Um, and uh, and I, I share that just because this whole idea, and I would share this with anybody, that if you are thinking about starting a business, and if you are thinking about becoming more successful in business, think first about how you can serve and provide more value. And this comes back to the gratitude idea. Right. You said earlier, Ted, you were wondering, like, is this a way that you could really use this to, from a management standpoint? And the answer is absolutely, with a caveat. Um, I've got a, a, a sign on my wall that says gratitude changes everything. And the reason for that is if somebody comes into your office and you're having it's their, a management nightmare, 
Um, if you have a strong vested interest in that individual's success, they're far more likely to succeed. Mm -hmm. If you have a vested interest in trying to make them feel bad or micromanage them, they're far more likely to not succeed and cause more frustration. If somebody came in and you have a hard time with them, one of the things you could do is as they're here, you're realizing you hired them for a certain skill set and they should be providing more value to you than you're asking. Uh, well, I'll put it this way. If you're paying them $15 an hour, they're probably providing $100 an hour of uh, work for you, right? Yeah. yeah. So right there, and if they aren't providing the $100 that you expected when you're paying them the 15, I think that's more of an issue with you than it is them. I think you've got to actually take and see, let me have a vested interest in this person and let me try to find a way to be thankful that they're here. Right. Because they at least showed up to work and they didn't have to, right? Yeah. They didn't have to. Now, I don't care if they're a drain on company resources. That's probably more a reflection of me than them. And because either I hired them and I don't know what I'm doing as, a, as, a, as an employer, or I hired them and they are the right person, but I'm not doing the right thing to serve them and manage them so that they can serve the company. Yeah. So what I would do in an instance like that, somebody comes in, you're frustrated. Find a way to access gratitude in any way possible. Be thankful for the work that they have done because it's more than they could have otherwise done. Right. Focus on that. What took place in that instance when they did the work you needed them to do versus what's missing from the work you're expecting them to do? Mm -hmm. So how do you become thankful for that individual, thankful that they showed up to work, thankful that they're here, thankful for what they've done? And then as you kind of interact with that and you find that frustration and you look for what's awesome, initiate gratitude, when you power up with gratitude, your interaction with that individual will yeah. become very, very different and will actually kind of dictate the way the conversation goes and you may find more opportunities to serve them. And here's the other thing. Gratitude breeds gratitude. Oh yeah. Right. It's contagious. So if you're a really thankful person and you interact with them that way, they will be more likely to find gratitude in the work that they're doing, which is going to increase their productivity, which is going to ultimately increase the success in your business. And so it really can become a sort of a foundational bedrock principle to the way business happens, I right. think. I think you see this a lot with Marcus Lemonis and The Prophet, oh, my yeah. favorite show on TV, <laughs> yeah. right? I mean, he knows it's people, but watch how thankful he is for what they created, the work that they've done, and, and it's very, very different than he doesn't just, he doesn't just attack, like he wants to learn and he wants to understand and he becomes really thankful for what they've done and what they're trying to do for people. Those are the businesses yeah. he invests yeah. in. And then they sort of take that and, and they kind of change the way that they do business as a result. He's a marvelous example in that way. So I think it is really powerful what gratitude could do in a business you know, kind of environment. Yeah, now that you say that about Marcus, it is amazing because he gets probably thousands of businesses are writing and writing to him. Then he comes out and he says, I I appreciate where you got your business to. You did an amazing right. job getting to here. Now you want me to take it to here. And he acknowledges that. And then it breaks totally the ice. Did. Especially those people that yeah. are really button heads with him. Yeah. He does that. It's says, true. You got here by yourself. That's amazing. Let's go to here. And you some know, people don't get it and they walk away. He walks away. <sighs> You know, uh, yeah, the, I, I, if you watch the show consistently, like the, the Farm Girl Flowers, the one from San Francisco, yeah. which I'm a fan of just because I grew up in the Bay Area, but um, she had zero gratitude. Do you see him? He was going, this is a really cool space. She's done something that's really great. You could sense that he's got gratitude. That's why he went to that business. Yeah. She wasn't thankful. All she wanted was money, and she had no desire to have a partnership. Yeah. Because she was ingrateful and she was complaining that the business isn't where she wants it to be. The money is not there. It's too difficult to scale. It's whatever. Yeah. And, and, and so again, this idea of, of channeling and activating gratitude in a business can become such a powerful thing. I mean, if you just put a, a sign on your computer or laptop that said, remember to flip the gratitude switch, or you put up a gratitude switch like I did in my office, um, and I have the sign that says gratitude changes everything. Just that simple reminder that it is available to you. It's free. Yeah. You don't have to pay to activate gratitude. Right. It's free. Right. You know, you, you can do that in an instant and it can change the trajectory of that conversation, the business, the day. Yeah. And it's just this thing that's constantly available, which I just love.
And yeah, it's free. That's it's so easy. <laughs> it, it totally is. You do it right now. You don't have to wait. You know, exactly. you can do it in your head. You can do it in your car. You can do it in your office. You can do it in bathroom, wherever. It's easy to do. You could do it right now. And because you now have a formula of you take the frustration, isolate it, look for what's awesome, yeah. and then initiate gratitude to power up with gratitude. Now you know that that happens. Now you can and realize that it doesn't have to take long for that process to take place. Now you've got this tool that you can use whenever, and it'll just kind of change things for yeah. you. So Jim's got a question. So thanks for the great content. I'm curious. Where and to whom do you express your gratitude? Is it God or some or someone else? You've kind of touched on this. Yeah, and and by the way, Jim, that is a brilliant question. Thank you so much. You know, um, I do. I, I would say that that I I kind of express it in a variety of ways. In my mind, there's always a transcendent power. There's always something that exists that's bigger than me that I'm being thankful to. So for me, that's God. But I don't necessarily, you know, in that moment when I'm initiating gratitude, um, in my mind, I feel like I've connected to the divine. But but it's really about for somebody that maybe doesn't believe the way that I, that I do, you have to understand that there is something that's bigger than you. And and because, by the way, this is a huge piece of gratitude. Gratitude sort of begats humility, right? And And a lack of humility is the easiest way to create a lack of success. Um, if you can be humble but strong, and by this I mean, you know, um, when you're when you're able to be humble and realize that you have the ability to control certain things, um, and and that certain things are, are are happening around you that you can interact with, it's not just you. You're not the center of the inter of the universe. There's much more at work than you. If you are brilliant as you're on your laptop, somebody, Steve Jobs somebody did something to invent that laptop. Like there's something that happened outside of you. And I think that, that always indicating that allows you to be humble and allows you to, to realize that you could always be more and do more. So um, when you express gratitude, even if you're just doing it internally and you don't have, you know, maybe a God that you worship, if you're just saying the words, and this is what I love, because look, I believe there's power in words. I believe there's energy that's associated with words. I believe that we can activate that energy um, when we use certain words. And the reason why I know this is uh, I do this example when I speak sometimes and I'll tell people, I'll say, clear your mind and I'm gonna give you three words. And I give them three words. Usually it's like fear, scarcity, um, hate. And what they'll do, I don't tell them what the words are gonna be and then I have them pay attention to their feelings and then I have them tell me what they felt. And they obviously have some negativity and they feel sort of fear. They feel frightened and they just don't like the way they feel inside. And they say, okay, clear your head again. I'm going to give you three more. And I'll usually um, say things like gratitude, love, and abundance. Even us just doing this right now, you feel a different energy that's yeah. associated with those words. What's interesting is if you were to hear those words in another language, you would probably still be able to um, glean something from that word, even if you don't understand it, like it would make you feel something. And I believe there's a transcendent sort of energy that accompanies words. Now, why do I share all that? It's a little woo woo, but I think that there's some truth to it. And here's the reason why. When you say the words, I'm so thankful for, you're, you're, you're saying thank you, but you're not necessarily directing your thank you at any person or any entity. You're just being thankful and feeling the thank you. When you do that, your body will shift. That's when you'll start to feel the change. Yeah. So if you don't believe the way I do, like I love to thank God. And I think that prayers of gratitude, not asking for anything, but just saying thank you can be really powerful as a practice of prayer from time to time. But I think that when you just become thankful and I guess appreciative that this thing exists, that's more than it could be, you're able to activate that power of gratitude. So it doesn't have to be directed at somebody, but by acknowledging that you could feel thank you and that there is something outside of you, um, it allows you to create a little bit more humility. And if you can kind of eliminate that ego, you're gonna be more successful and people are more likely to interact with you in every way, shape and form. I, so much came to me while you were saying that. <laughs> It's like I thinking whenever I've struggled in my life, it's because I put on the blinders and you're like trying to do it all yourself and you just get try to power through it. You think I can't yep. give up. I can't give up. I got to keep going. But you just reach out or say something to someone. They give you an idea or they're there to support you. 
if they know nothing about what you're struggling about, if they just say, hey, hang in there, say something kind to people, yes. it just changes your whole body. It, Everything it changes. I got to tell you, so this is one of my favorite things that we do with our kids. When I have them flip the gratitude switch, so my, my son Braxton uh, is four. He's an awesome kid. And he sometimes likes to whine a little bit. And um, so when he does, we walk him through a process. And I say, okay, buddy, I understand that you're not happy. Let's talk about why you're not happy. He'll tell me. And then I'll say, do you like the feeling inside? Do you not like the feeling inside? And he'll say, I don't like the way I feel inside. And I say, okay, what can we do to change it? And I'll get them to the point, this is the key, I'm getting them to the point where they're gonna start to express gratitude for something I'm not telling them to. And, and what happens is, I love this, because yeah, this happened, I don't know, maybe about a month ago. He was upset about something, and I took him through that process. And I, and I was like, we got to the point where I was like, okay, buddy, well then let's think of some things that you can you know, be thankful for. Can you think of anything? And he goes, that I have a sister, that I have a bunk bed, whatever. Yeah. And I said, okay, buddy, I want you to say, so he's still kind of like this, I have a sister, I have a bunk bed, <laughs> yeah. right? He was looking for what's awesome, but he had to move to the step to initiate gratitude. So this, in, this experience taught me so much about that step of actually initiating gratitude. Because I said to him, I said, okay, buddy, now I want you to say, I'm thankful I have a sister. But I want you to say the word thankful. And he didn't want to, it was kind of like this. And then he's like, this is literally, I don't know if I can act it out, I'm gonna try. He literally went like this. I'm thankful I have a sister. And as soon as he said the word thankful, yeah. his face changed. And I knew that what had happened is he'd experienced this release of dopamine. He doesn't know what that is. Yeah. He, just knew he, he just knew he felt different. And I watched his entire countenance shift. And all of a sudden, he was my happy, uh, sweet, laughing, unbelievably loud, which I love, child, right? It was awesome. awesome. And, and so I, I share that experience because it taught me something because I'm still a student in this, right? Yeah, I wrote a book and I get to talk about this, but I talk about it not as the expert. I talk about it as a student who's constantly applying, evolving, and learning. Yeah. And, and that experience really taught me something. I went, see, look at the power that's attached to those words. There's something there. Because when he said that, that's when his countenance shifted. And I've sort of paid attention to it ever since then with my daughter or with whoever and even me. And it's like wh there's something about activating and initiating gratitude by saying the words and actually feeling the thank you that is just, I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't, I can't really adequately describe it. I just know that it is. Yeah. And it is awesome. So there is a physical thing that changes. It's, it's really cool. Yeah. It's such a yeah. gift, right? I mean, like, how cool is it that we're like hardwired to feel awesome when we do awesome stuff? It's amazing. And you can just really flip is. the switch whenever you want. That's right. For yep, free. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I think somebody wants to come on and say hello. Milana, do you want to come on and jump on here? Oh, let's see if she does. Let's see. Baby, you or there? She, or she just ditched you. She might have. She might have been like, yeah, I'm not going to listen to that. I hear this all the time at home. I'm good. I don't really need to. I'm fine. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she's probably, I bet you she's changing a diaper right now. That would probably be pretty likely. That's probably And we don't want to see that. We're, gonna, we're, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's awesome. Okay. So when is your book available? So um, we've got, we're going to be launching a pre-sale here really, really soon. Um, and uh, we're going to have the official launch of the book in April. And so if you follow me on Twitter or Facebook at Kevin Clayson, um, connect with me there, you'll always see updates. And then also if you visit kevinclayson.com or gratifuel.com, um, right now they're kind of clunky word sites where I'm having them all redesigned right now in preparation for the launch. But you can get on a list where you'll at least be able to, to stay kind of up to date with uh with with what's going on oh my wife tried to get on she said i don't know how i don't know she's how, probably yeah. enjoyed it for her phone. um the cool so, thing about blab is you just sit there and if your camera comes on it can be embarrassing at times right <laughs> <laughs> well then i'm super glad i put on my extra foundation today that's then that's right. really you know, i want to look pretty <laughs> hey can i share one thing real quick because sure. i i i just want you know we were talking about thinking or feeling gratitude and i just wanted to share this because you were talking about how people can kind of come into your experience and say or do something and it can kind of change that moment, you know, and it can kind of, it almost that, that moment and that person almost becomes an ambassador of gratitude for you, which allows you to receive it and actually activate it. 
So I kind of, you know, there's always this, this constant, I guess, search for like, what, you know, how does one live a happy life? And I think that gratitude is a really massive, unbelievable keystone to that process. But here's the other thing that I found. And, and I like to share this when I go and, and speak. And I like to just kind of put these thoughts out there because it's something that I try to do and I'm not perfect at, but I feel like it could be a big difference. What if every day when we woke up, we had two prevailing thoughts in our head? One is to do what you did. And we, we start the day off with gratitude. A lot of times when I swing my legs out of bed, when one foot hits the ground, I think thank. And when the other foot hits the ground, I think you. Uh, and that is a, a, an expression of gratitude to God, but uh, just starting my day with gratitude. But what if the other thought, what if the prevailing thought throughout the day was, today, I want to find an opportunity to serve one person completely selflessly at least once today. Right? We're not talking about like going over the top. I mean, you could serve somebody inside of 30 seconds or a minute, right? When you, when you do that thing and you say hi or you're nice. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite things to do is, you know, if you're at a drive through buy the car behind you lunch, yeah. or if you're at a gas station and you're getting a, a, a water or a drink and the person behind you say, Hey, throw this up here, right? Those are physical versions. But I found that even reaching out to somebody on Facebook, Twitter, and just saying, one of the things that I means the world to me is I'll get these people who have heard me on a podcast or on something like this. And they'll just reach out to me on Facebook and they'll say today. I thought about gratitude and it changed this. And they, they, I don't think they realize how much of a service they're rendering for me then. Not because it's a validation and it's like building my ego. It's because it's sort of a reminder of this thing of flipping the gratitude switch is so real and so transformative. And it, it fuels me to keep going. But what it also does is they took their time to selflessly type something. They're not expecting anything in return. They're just saying thank you. And that expression of gratitude, because gratitude sort of breeds gratitude, creates more for me. And that changes me in that moment. Yeah. And, and I think that, you know, there's such simple acts of service, things that we could do that don't take a lot of time. But if that was the prevailing thought, I'm going to flip the gratitude switch. I'm going to be thankful, especially for the frustrations and all of it. But then I'm going to serve at least one person a day, one time selflessly. Can you imagine what this world would look like if everybody sh showed up to life that way when they woke up? Yeah. And I feel like those two things, Ted, I feel like those are the two things that create the happy life, no matter what the circumstance. And because uh, I think there's something inside that happens. And I just wanted to share that because I just found that that's so just, sh it's been such a shift for me to look at life that way. And I just think it makes a big difference. It, I can see such a difference because when I first met you, you were so focused on that business and making more totally. money and building it bigger right. and bigger. Yes. And there's a huge shift. And I just realized I do that all day long. I like, Say happy birthday to everybody on Facebook. Yeah. I take a moment. Right. Take like a minute to type happy birthday, whatever their name is. And LinkedIn. And it starts conversations. And they're so appreciative. Thinking. And it makes them feel awesome. Correct. Because they think I'm like some kind of guru, God, kind of like, wow. Yeah. Ted said happy birthday to me. I'm like, I'm the same. Which old. you are, by the way. <laughs> I'm still the same guy <laughs> I was when I was four. <laughs> But you know, what's cool about that is like, you know, on LinkedIn, it, I mean, you look, it's not hard. LinkedIn says, Hey, it's so-and-so's birthday. Congratulate them on, you know, the anniversary of X, Y, Z, whatever. Right. And you know, when you just take a moment, cause a lot of times it's really easy to kind of swipe left on those things, right? Yeah. Just, okay, cool. Yeah. I don't, I don't, let, let me get to my notifications. Like who looked at my LinkedIn profile, right? We become selfish. But when we just take a second and, and let our fingers do some magic, I mean, how much more likely is that person to want to continue to interact with you because you took a second to say happy birthday to them? And it's not hard. And they feel awesome. They go, they know if nothing else, even if LinkedIn told them it was your birthday, if nothing else, they know that in a minute, for a moment, you thought of them and now they're thinking of you and there's a connection there. And that's pretty cool. And those kind of connections can change everything, you know? I mean, there's yeah. really something to that beauty and simplicity that I just think is is really, really cool. But, and that's how easy it can be to serve, right? What if that was the prevailing thought? Um, it's kind of cool. Oh, it makes you feel so good. Cause so good. I get questions every day. People are always asking me, how do I do this? How do I do that? I could be a jerk and say, hire me and I'll tell you the answer. Or I right. can just tell you the answer, hey, do this. Yeah. And they're like, 
Thank you. Yeah. And now you just gave them like a ton of stuff and they know, wow, he, that was really helpful. Man, what if I had this guy in my corner to, to help me understand all this stuff? I mean, how much more likely are they to want to do business with you because you serve them first? Like because you planting more little about them. seeds of gratitude out there every day. That's right. It's exactly right. And that's why like, I never wanted to keep the formula, the flip formula, like secret, like, Oh, you gotta buy my book to learn the four step <laughs> formula. It's like, here it is. And you know what? It's going to take you some time to use it and learn it and understand it. And one of the best ways is to get an entire book to get a bunch of reminders and a bunch of different examples that can help you view the world differently. And if somebody wants that, awesome, they can invest in my book. But if all they needed is to hear this conversation and now they start to change their life, beautiful, right? Like that's awesome. Yeah. And if somebody wants more time and they, they want to, you know, look at a course or they want to, you know, do coaching or what, like that, I get to leave that up to them. It's basically on what their needs are, not what what my needs are and what I'm trying to impose on what I believe their needs should be, you know? And that's it's really a different way to interact with people and, and business. And I just think it's the right way. Yeah. I totally agree with you. Well, Kevin, thanks a lot. This has been I'm so grateful to connect with you like this. <laughs> oh well thanks, brother. You know, Ted, I, I'm thankful for you. I love watching you on social media. You know, we don't get a chance to talk and connect um, beyond social media that often. But when we do, I'm always uplifted and edified by you. And I think what you do for people and even just doing this is such a service and you're such a great guy. And I'm just thankful to know you and thankful that we were able to have this conversation about something I love. Um, and, and I hope that people take something away and do something with it today and, and flip the gratitude switch just once today. In fact, that'd be my challenge is like, pick one frustration today, flip the gratitude switch just once, find the frustration, look for what's awesome, initiate that gratitude and feel the thank you and, and uh, watch yourself power up with gratitude and see how that feels. And it's going to feel awesome. So you'll want to just keep doing it, but, but take the opportunity to not just hear this stuff and go, yeah, that's a great discussion, but actually do something about it. Cause that's when your life will really change, you know? And so thank you for letting me come on and have this opportunity to, to, to chat it up, man. It's awesome. So everybody go to kevinclayson.com right now and get on the list so you can get his book when it comes out. Thanks, brother. And thank you. Next time we'll have Milana on here. We'll train her how to get on yes. here. She's way, she's way easier to look at too. My <laughs> wife is way prettier than I deserve. And don't tell her that if she's still listening, don't let her know that she's like a 10 and I'm like a, like a, like a three and a half. She like, just said, ha, ha. she's laughing at <laughs> oh, you. <laughs> see, she's like, see, I'm just, I was trying to win brownie points, but it really is true. Like I know we go to places or parties or something and they're like, this is your wife. Like if you go to my Facebook, you're like, wait, you got to marry her? Dude, does gratitude make you prettier or better looking? Because she must not know what we see. So anyway, she's there you go. We should have her on. This stuff <laughs> works. Be grateful. <laughs> That's right. Very beautiful woman. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Kevin. We'll talk soon. Thanks, Ted. Take care. Bye, everybody.